What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Love and Hip Hop New York. <coughs> Excuse me. Season 10, episode 5. So, we picked this episode up. We, um, we're looking at... Um, we have Ski in the studio. She invites Rich down to the studio. She also invites Pressure. And she's talking to Rich. And she's like, you know... Rich, um... I want Rich to know that I'm serious. I know things, you know, went a little crazy. You know, at the, um... The um the showcase last week, but I appreciate him coming in, introducing to me to who he introduced me to, and I want him to know I'm serious. Rich's thing was, look, I'm too old for the drama. You know, I'm trying to get back into music, but I don't want no mess. Um, but this chick is a star. I see it, and I'm gonna be here. So we are gonna figure this out. Pressure comes through, and pressure is looking like, well, wait a minute. Like you asked me to come down here, I ain't know Rich was gonna be here. Like. Lately, every time I see you, you with Rich or you talking about Rich. What's going on? You know, if you're going to be my artist, you're my artist. And, you know, her thing was, look, I need you to show me. You know, you keep telling me what you're going to do for me, but you're not showing me what you're going to do for me. And so there was sort of like a little showdown. But she said, basically, her thing was, I've known Pressure since, I, you know, for, for years now. I'm going to give him a chance to show it to me before. You know, I've, been, I've, I've spent all this time building up this relationship with him. Um, so I want to, I want him to be able to show me what he going to do before I just jump ship and go running over there to Rich. So, you know, Rich is on the, on the sideline, you know, looking like the Cheshire cat, like, mm -hmm, she'll be back. And he was right. So later on in the episode, cause her thing was, you need to control your wife before I get there. She was like, when she called her, his wife out her name, which he should have checked her. And he didn't. The minute he, the minute she started referring to his wife as something other than his wife, he should have checked her. And he, he didn't. He let her just call his wife crazy names. Which, if you're trying to get back in your wife's good graces, that probably ain't the best thing to do is let another woman disrespect her. But, okay. And he was like, you right, you right. I should be, you know, I, you right. I should do a better job of controlling my, my wife. You right, you right. But, you know, we're going to work on that. We're going to get that straight. So she was like, all right, I'm going to give him another chance to show me what he's going to be able to do for me. So then, later on in the episode, we see that him and his wife are still at odds. He he said he was staying at his grandmama's house because wife won't even let him back in the house. And he's trying to talk to her, and she won't let him. You know, she like, look, whatever. She packing up his stuff, putting it in boxes. Basically, like, look, I'm not going to keep dealing with your disrespect. Now, what we find out is... In the 20 years that they've been together, he has, they ain't come right out and said, but you can read between the lines, this man has been unfaithful and has cheated, to her, cheated on her multiple times. So her insecurity is not 100% out of line. However, comma, my thing is, if you don't trust him, you don't need to be with him. Yeah, y'all have two kids. Yes, y'all have history. But if you got to be running up on some dude at the club acting crazy, then he probably ain't the one you need to be with. And she told him, she was like, look, you allow these women to disrespect me. You allow these women, you know, so I walk up in there. He was like, well, first of all, you wasn't even supposed to be there. She said, I'm a grown-ass woman. I can go wherever the hell I want to go. You don't get to tell me where not to be. And I call myself being there to support you and support the company. She said, you know... When he was younger and he was, you know, signed to a record label, they told him that being single was more of an appeal. So I played the back. I played in the background. I let it I let him do what he do. She said, But now we own the company. It's our company. And he said he was gonna claim me. So if I show up, it shouldn't be no problem. But I walk up in there and they holding hands and looking real intimate. Now, I think you overreacted, but again, going back to knowing what the history is there. It is what it is. So we'll get back to them. So we have Sin, um, Jonathan, and um, oh, we have Sin, Jonathan, and Juju. They having karaoke night. We see Jonathan and Sin having a good time, honey. And basically, that whole conversation was to let Sin know that Erica Mena is trying to hook up Joe Button with his ex, with Tahiri. And Sin tried to play like she ain't care. You know, she was like, wait a minute, what? She was like, so what? I'm supposed to be all upset, crying, and boo-hoo? Like, no, that's not what I'm going to do. Like, it, 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 he do what he do. It is what it is. But she really feels some kind of way. Because later on in the episode, you call yourself confronting him and want to tell him that basically she talking about some, you know, you don't want to play that game with me. It won't be pretty. Um, You know, you're not going to disrespect me. I'm the mother of your child. And Joe was just sitting there like, uh-huh. Okay. 
he was like, yeah, I've seen her. You know, I went to the housewoman. We went shopping for outfit for the wedding. But, you know, it's, it's no, we're not getting, like, we're not dating. And he was like, you know, whoever's giving her the impression that there's more going on, like, they out of line because there's nothing going on. Like, it, it ain't nothing happening. So, then at the end of the, because I'm just going to get them out the way because it ain't that, I, I, this is a crazy storyline as far as I'm concerned. So at the end of this, the episode, we see where Jonathan hooks up Erica and Sin to have this conversation to, I guess, to basically clear the air and figure out where's where and what's what. And then Sin starts talking about how hard it is and why would you do that to me? You just trying to get back at me, but that's the father of my child and you're pregnant. You know what it's like. My child isn't even two years old. You know that how hard this is for me. And then she starts crying and she leaves. Look, look, I don't understand. Sin, either you want this man back or you don't. Is it that you want you don't want him back, but you don't want him to get back with his ex? Is it a anybody but her type situation, or you do want him back, but you just want him to admit the mistakes that he made so that y'all can start fresh and really work it out? Like, what's really going on? I'm crazy. I don't understand it. So it's whatever. There's their storyline. I can't. I can't do nothing more with that. Then, let's go on and get Remy and Papoose on out the way, too. Love Remy and Papoose. I love them. But basically, Remy is talking to Papoose because Remy is like, look, Joe put a fire under my butt. I need to get I need to get this album done. I need to go down to Miami. That's where all the magic has happened for me. When I'm in Miami, I'm just in my happy place. I, that's where I can get, get it done. And... I, I cleared my schedule, and I need to head down to Miami for two weeks. Papoose is like, hold up. I'm not going to be able to make that because I have some things happening with my music right now, and <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to drop everything and go down to Miami for two weeks. So here's what I love about the two of them. It wasn't an argument. It wasn't a, well, I, why can't you do that for me? Why can't you? It wasn't none of that. It was, let's figure this out. Because your music is just as important to you as my music is to me. And what they said was that basically Papoose was on the precipice when she got arrested. And he put his whole career on hold. He dropped everything to... They said he was on tour, as a matter of fact. He dropped, left the tour, came back home to bail her out of jail, and basically was there ever since. He let everything go with his career. Because nobody... You might question how successful his career was, but nobody will question... Um, Papoose as an artist Like if you question whether Papoose got bars Then you don't know hip hop Like Papoose got bars um, But she said he was dropping new music And he was doing all these things with his career And all that came to a hold When they got when she went to jail And she said so I don't want to be the reason Why he can't pursue his music now Because I feel like I already stopped Where his career would have gone Or where it could have been Had I not gotten in trouble and so, I love the fact that they figured it out. You know what I mean? I love the fact that they said, we have to figure this out for for each one of our careers. And so, she ended up going to um, Miami. And we see her in the studio making it work. Because then they were worried about who was going to keep the baby. And he's talking about some, well, let me keep the baby. She was like, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. And he was like, what you think I can't take? I can't handle it? She was like, I, I think you don't have breasts. And how you going to, how you going to. How, how you gonna feed the baby? Cause you don't you don't have the food. So, well anyway, we see the we see her in Miami trying to make it work. I'm so I'm so ready for this album to come out too. And we see her talking to Joe, and and basically Joe was like, "Look, you're doing what you gotta do. Like it is what it is. You're doing what you gotta do." So that was them. And again, I'm not knocking them out the way because they aren't important. I'm just knocking them out the way because that was the extent of what we saw this week with them. Um. Then we have the Erica Mena Safari situation. So, Erica Mena is still trying to get Safari to understand what he did wrong. Safari is apologizing, but he apologizes with a smirk on his face. He apolog he halfway apologizing, you know. And she's like, do you really, she was like, here's the problem. You made me look stupid, number one. And you made it look like I have a problem with Yandy, which I don't. You told me you weren't going to invite her, and you did invite her. He's talking about some a text messages and an invitation. I don't feel like I invited her. 
She said, do you need me to read you the text message? The text message said, do you want to come to the wedding? See, what that is, is he said, well, I didn't know, or I didn't feel like asking her if she wanted to come to the wedding was an invitation. I just thought, I just wanted to see if she would be interested in coming. She never got an invitation, so why did she think she was invited? So far, you playing games with words, and you know you playing games with words. And Erica let him know. And here's when you know that they were really arguing. Because Erica was like, you being real stupid right now. You got these cameras right here, and you being real stupid. And Erica, the way Erica walked off, you could see the cameras, you know, the cameraman in the background. I was like, see, that's when you know it's real. When they let you see the cameraman, and when she starts referring to the cameras in the room, that's when you know they were really arguing. And she was like, look, I'm not going to do this with you. Like, you got me looking real stupid right now. You making yourself look stupid. At the end of the day, you were being deceitful, and you lied. And even if you don't feel like it was a lie, it was a lie by omission. And you got me out here looking crazy in these streets, and I don't appreciate it. So Safari ends up, he wanted to surprise Erica with a salsa dance at the wedding. So him and Tahiri are going to salsa lessons and she's helping him out. And so after they have the salsa lesson, she tells him, she was like, look, and she said something I thought was deep. She said, nobody should ever, no, you should never let your wife be in a position where somebody else can tell her something about her husband. She should never. There should never be a situation where somebody else can tell her anything about you. And that's what you did. You made her look stupid. And you you made it look like Yandy knew something she didn't know. Then you made it look like she had a problem with Yandy. All of that made her look bad. Now for you to sit there and act like you don't know what you did or you don't understand what you did, you're being disingenuous. And instead of just apologizing and saying, my bad, I didn't mean to make you look bad. I didn't mean to put you in that bad situation. You want to double down and put 10 on 20. And that makes her look even worse. And, you know, now all of a sudden he, oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Child. So, anyway, then he rents a, a hotel suite. He puts a whole bunch of flowers and roses, honey. And he invites her in there. And he, you know, apologizes sincerely this time. Tells her he understands what he did wrong. And, you know, Erica was like, at the end of the day, I ain't care about you. I don't care about Yandy coming to the wedding. I just... Like, you lied about it. So then he gets down on one knee and he tells her, you know, ask her basically, will you marry me again? And then he gives her this watch she's been waiting for. I think it's a four-year Rolex, one of them, you know, really expensive-ass watches. Um, and, of course, it's the one I've always wanted. Now, all of a sudden, she ain't mad no more, honey. They all good. And there's that. Now, now the part where Sin talks to Joe about what's going on between him and Tahiri, I forgot to mention this part. Sin was in the studio. She said that music makes her happy and she's making her music in the studio. Okay. I'm going to let that, I'm going to just put that over there. I'm going to put that right over there. Now we see um, Ski, what's her name? Joy Ski? Whatever she say her name is. Her and Rich, um, Rich took her to the radio station. Got her on the radio. She was able to freestyle, Hot 97, all of that. And, you know, basically, Rich was like, look, I saw you. I wasn't sure if I wanted to really rock with you. You sent me your music. I thought your music was dope. You set up a, a showcase. I invited some industry folk. That was favor number one. Now, brought you to the radio station. You got to get on the radio. You got to spit some bars. Favor number two. He said, that's two freebies. He was like, I don't like to share. So either you rock it with me or you not. If you want to stay with pressure, that's cool. He a nice dude. I don't have no beef with him, but I'm not going to share. Either you 100% with me or you can work with him, and I wish you all the best. Um, She was like, you know what? You're right. Last time I was at the radio station, I got to sit down and watch pressure on the radio. He didn't even introduce me. Um, And you're right. So, you know. I'm rocking with you, boo. I'm with you. And what I like is, at least so far, Rich ain't pulling no fast one. He ain't flirting with her. He ain't trying to blur no lines. He keeping it strictly business, at least so far. And I can respect that. And so he was like, all right, paperwork will be in your email in the morning. <laughs> so she's officially working with Rich now. Now, we're going to see how that work out when Mr. Pressure finds out. Because, of course, you know, he was really... He told me some when he was arguing with his wife. He was like, "We need to hold on to her because she's paying the bills right now." And in my mind, I'm thinking, 
she don't even have a record deal. She ain't got a single. How's she paying your bills? But, all right, I guess. I guess she paying the bills. Um, But anyway, so that was this episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.